Hello students, how are you today? It's Miss Kinji. Today we are going to draw pop art. If you see behind me there, you'll see Andy Warhol and a lot of different pop art designs. But before we get started, let me show you a little video on pop art. The most famous artist in the pop art movement is Andy Warhol. Andy Warhol was a successful magazine and ad illustrator. And in the 1960s, he used everyday products as a part of his art form. Andy loved to look at magazines and he loved to paint movie stars. The pop art movement became very popular. In fact, that's what pop art stands for, popular art. Today, there are a few famous pop artists, such as Takashi Murakami, whose art is noted throughout the world. He also has a clothing line. Pop artists love to paint items we use on a daily basis, such as bananas, Coca-Cola cans, even Mickey Mouse has become a favorite. Marilyn Monroe is one of Andy Warhol's most sought after piece of art. Comic books, even advertisement. Andy Warhol was very famous in his life. He painted 900 paintings, a hundred sculptures, and over 2,000 works on paper, just to name a few. Notice the squares and the colors. The soup cans are one of his most famous. He said his mother would give him soup daily when he was a little boy. Let's discuss our learning goal. Students will learn a brief history about the pop art movement and one of the most famous pop artists, Andy Warhol. Students will then select their own topic to draw and choices of color. Now here are some inspiring questions teachers may ask their students to recap the lesson of the pop art movement. Okay, students, for our supplies today, you will need white copy paper, a ruler, pencil, and a Sharpie, or you can use a black marker, or you can just use your pencil. And if you have colored pencils, markers, or crayons, feel free to use whatever you have at home. Now to begin, we are going to section our paper into six squares. As you noticed from the video of Pop Art, you saw how Andy Warhol lined up his pictures side by side. So we're going to use a white copy paper and we're going to fold it the long way. So just match up the ends and then very simply fold it over and then fold this in back. When you open it up, you will have your six squares. Okay, now take your ruler and place your ruler in the middle and just go straight down on the line that we created when we folded the paper. Go across and then across down at the bottom. Okay, and now we have our six squares for our pop art design. And now students, let's select a topic for our pop art. Just check out all the choices that you have and then pick one that really grabs your attention. Remember, art is a feeling. So just feel your way through those subjects and let's create our pop art. So here is an example of a pop art advertisement. You might have seen it before. So I think I am going to select this to draw for my pop art, all right? So it's a cute little owl. Notice that each color in the square is a different color. And that's what we want to make sure we do a different color in each square in the background. 
I'm going to start off with the blue Sharpie. And I am going to draw quite large because I want to make sure that I see my owl clearly. Okay? And remember when you're drawing, it's just for fun. So don't take everything so seriously. Just have a good time. So I'm going to put my owl's eyes and a line. And then I'm going to color in the eyes. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and wait on the glasses, but I'm going to put a triangle for the nose. And then there's a line coming around on both sides. Okay. And there's a lot of little design up at the top. Then there's these cute little feet or little claws, I should say, that are at the bottom. All right. So I'll wait to color all this in later. And I can just decide what I want to put in my pop art as far as the design. It can be different from the picture. It doesn't have to be exactly like the picture. All right. And this time I'm going to use a dark blue. You know, the more you draw something, the better you get. Okay, and then the eyes. And I always want to reiterate that we're just having a good time. I will keep these same lines because I think it's going to make it look cohesive. Little ears. And this time I'm just going to do a little zigzag. Just something that I'm feeling that I want to add into my picture. You never have to draw exactly like Miss Kinji. It's good for you to choose your own uh, way of drawing. Okay, um, brown. So for this square, I'm going to use brown. Once again, I'm coming around. So make sure that when you're drawing, that you're drawing kind of on a large scale. Okay, all right. And then once again, I'm gonna put these two lines, my little triangle for the nose, and then my little feet underneath the bottom. And now for my next square, I'm going to use red, sort of like a fuchsia color. Notice I'm using a different color to draw each one because I want them to look different, but the same. And now I'm going to use orange for my next owl. So I'm going to come around once again, put a little line in there for the ears, two big eyes. He's really a, quite a cute little owl. And then the beak this time goes down and around on each side and the little feet. I think I'll just go on and use this gray. Looks kind of cool. So around. And then the ears. Do you know an owl can turn its head all the way around and back again? It's one of the only birds that can do that. And then the little claws under here. Okay, so now I have my owl in all different colors, and now I'm going to go back and put in the, the uh, glasses. Okay, so now I went ahead and put glasses on my owl. And notice, you know, when you're drawing students, it, you know, try not to be so concerned about if it looks right or wrong. Just feel your way from the heart, have some fun, and enjoy 
your drawing experience. Okay, so now, like I said, all the backgrounds are a different color. So I went ahead and selected uh, red for my gray. You don't want to put the same color next to the owl. For example, I wouldn't put red here because this is red. So I'm putting red next to my gray. I'm putting orange next to my red. I'm going to put green next to my blue. And I'm going to put purple next to this light blue. And for brown, I'm going to use yellow. And then for my orange, I'm going to use a soft black, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and color the backgrounds of each one and make sure when you're coloring whatever you're using to color that you stay in the same direction. Because if you go back and forth, then it will begin to look scribbly. So just do your best when you color the background, stay in the same direction as much as possible, just like this. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and color in the backgrounds and then we'll discuss. Okay, as you can see, I went ahead and colored my background. So that looks really good. I'm very happy with that. Now, if you happen to use black as part of your background, make sure you color softly because you don't want it to dominate the whole picture by coloring it really, really dark. Okay, now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna use my markers or Sharpies to color in some of the design in my owl. And just to uh, sort of speed up time, I'm just going to use green for the gray. And then I'm going to use yellow just to color the rest of the owl. Try to stay within the lines when you're doing your pop art designs. And remember at the beginning of the video, I showed some different topics that you can choose from. If you wanna do cupcakes or ice creams or cars or a cartoon character that you really admire, go right ahead and use that as a design for your pop art. But it needs to be the same picture in each square. Okay, students, now you see the pop art is completed. Notice it's a different color in every square and every owl is a different color from the background as well. That's important to remember when you are doing your pop art. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. And like I said, you can choose any subject you want to draw in your squares. If you have a little piece of construction paper, you can always staple it to your art and it keeps it nice and neat you can hang it on the wall. All right, I hope to see you again soon and have a beautiful day.